Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Hello and welcome to another episode of Crystal One on One. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Today I have a passionate Pan-Africanist as well as folk and world musician Joel Sebunjo. He is joining me on the show today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's How are nice you doing? It's nice to have you on Crystal One on One. The pleasure is really mine. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. How is your morning turning out? Morning is uh, so far so good. How do you normally start your mornings? Do you have rehearsals or? Uh, depending on what I have to do in the week, normally it's between uh, rehearsals, mm. sometime office, mm -hmm. sometime recording studio, mm -hmm. sometimes sleeping, depending on. <laughs> <laughs> on the on the on the need <laughs> does that mean you like your sleep not necessarily but um you know sometimes you know we with the creatives yeah you know the bed is a good time is a good time also to reflect oh. you know you, sometimes you can be in the bed for hours not because you are snoozing but you're, you're just reflecting on on what you want to do sometimes i just get my headphones and i i, I just get into my bed and i is that also a time for you to get inspiration and exactly think exactly inspiration is uh Normally, time when you're alone mm -hmm. in, in your space and where you have mm -hmm. comfort, then this when you get different ideas of what you want to execute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was talking to someone recently, and they were mm. saying they have to learn how to just sit quietly mm. and do nothing because at every point in time they mm. feel like they want to either read or watch TV or be doing something. Indeed, and 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 you know, in uh, in reality, the time when you're doing nothing, of course. You're doing something, yeah, but you're you, thinking. You, yeah, you're thinking. <laughs> but I'll, I'll quote the quiet because ideas come out of uh, quiet and silence. Because silence is the best time to create. Mm. That's why we, the musicians, we believe um, silence is the canvas where we put our thoughts to create music. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because so silence is, is a big part of of music. Yes. So you yeah. have to always withdraw so that you yeah. can have your creative moments. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, I said you're pa passionate Pan-Africanist. Yes. Your last album is titled United Slaves yes. of Africa. Yes. And uh, that's, there's a lot of lyrical content in there that's really, yes. really deep. Yes. How long have you been a Pan-Africanist? Is this mm. even before you started your music journey or it kicked in at some point with um, your influences? Yeah, for, for a bigger part of my, my life, I would say, um, I've been um, a Pan-African, but unaware that I'm one. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Because um, the kind of uh, art I do is very much uh, rooted in the roots of the continent. In mm. the, because folk, folk is roots, mm -hmm. and Africa is instruments, language, and, and the music. Mm -hmm. And that's a bigger part of Pan-Africans, but I didn't know that. That's, that could be a big, a big branch of that. Mm. So, um, but when I started reading a lot of, because I like reading and, uh, and um, I'm a big fan of African politics, uh, African culture, uh, African geography, uh, everything to do with Africa, I like to, to go in depth about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I thought actually, with this kind of information and where I stand today, mm -hmm. it makes me uh, a notable contributor to the Pan-African ideology. Mm which is basically being proud to be African. Um, proud of your roots. Yeah, connecting the, the diaspora with the continent mm. and a, a lot of things like that. Okay. Yes. Now you explain the side of you that's a folk musician, yeah. but you're also a world musician. Yes. For people who don't understand what mm. that genre is, maybe you can explain it a bit. Um, okay. Um, folk and world in, 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 in the business that I do are very much interconnected. Or is the, the, the genre is called folk and world. Mm. But would say folk is the tradition mm -hmm. of i would say when i get a a drum what, what, what i would call it embutu mm. embutu is our local drum what we call the local drum but the name is called embutu mm. or engoma and i play a rhythm from chigezi that's already folk okay folk is the 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 the, the, the identity of the people from that area the what defines 
them. Folk can be rhythm, can be language, can be food. Mm. Matoke is folk. Mm. Yeah, but now on the side of music, so the, the, the traditional music is folk music. Okay. You know? Yes. So, from folk we go to world. When we get the, the tradition and fuse it with different influences of the world, it becomes a world product. Okay. If I get oh, if I get the Madinda, mm -hmm. what we call the xylophone, yeah. and work with a guitarist and put maybe an influence from South America, say salsa, that makes it world music. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's why it's easy to translate and pretty much perform anywhere in the world. Exactly, well. exactly. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, but 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 the term world music was more like a, a, a scholarly uh, attribute to, 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 to what we're doing in the business. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like um, R&B was a known genre. When you when you went to a store out where anywhere to buy music, you, there would be a section for R&B, mm -hmm. classical, uh, so mm -hmm. maybe jazz, uh, yeah, maybe jazz. Mm -hmm. All these things had. But then a bigger part of music from Africa uh, did, didn't have a, a category uh, place in the, in the music stores. So when, when people started recording a lot, probably in the, in the 80s and the 70s, you know, the tablets, the, the, the Fela Kutis actually. Fela Kutis is a major contributor to that. Mm -hmm. And then they needed to find a place to put all these records where people could find them. So most of the records that came from Africa then went under world, the oh, world category. Okay. So Africa, maybe South America, yeah. Mm, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now you say you're proudly, proudly mm. African, proudly yes. Ugandan. One yes. of your albums is I, titled I Speak Luganda. Yes. Is that your third album? That's my third album, yes. Your third album. Yes. So I am assuming you were born here. I'm born here. I'm uh -huh. born in Uganda. Yes. Where? I was born in, uh, where was I born actually? That's a good question. In Mulago. <laughs> <laughs> you had to think about it. Yes, I have, I have to think of where I was born, but uh -huh. I was born in Mulago. Okay. Yes. And Gr you grew up? Grew up in Kampala. Mm -hmm. I spent a bigger part of my childhood with my grandmother. Oh. Well, my grandmother on the maternal side. Okay. Uh, because uh, at the time when I was born, then my father moved to, to the USSR then, in the Soviet Union. As a student oh, okay. of pharmacy, he got a scholarship. To go and study pharmacy, uh, masters and PhD. So I stayed with my mother, but then my mother was busy also. She had to work. Uh -huh. She was a nurse, or oh, she's a nurse. Mm -hmm. So uh, I spent a bigger part with my grandmother in Nankurabia, oh, okay. near Makerere here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I went to kindergarten from my gran grandmother's home. Actually, recently. I passed that side and I saw the kindergarten where I went. It's called Namirembe Kindergarten. It's still there. Still so beautiful. Oh, I, I wow. When I, I was going to Bulange to meet the Katikira, and when I saw this, I was like, wow! <laughs> this, this is why I went to school. And I, Have I you been so, tempted to go back? And actually, I thought I should go and pay a visit because that was also my first encounter with music in that kindergarten. Why? Because they had a, a really, like a real piano in that school, in that kindergarten. Mm -hmm. and they used to have the pianists to accompany the kids to sing, and I was always fascinated by this piano that mm -hmm. was in that school. Yeah, anyway, so that, that was it. And so did you try to play? Did someone start teaching you then? No, no, no as kids, we, you, you just fancy about things. You, mm -hmm. you look at the piano, oh, this is nice, and you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I remember we used to have these, uh, they used to make these local shakers mm -hmm. that were made from, um, what are they called, bottle tops. They would put a wire uh -huh. through these bottle tops, and then we used to shake them. Ah. So I have a good memory of that. I used to fight for those shakers. I, I always remember that. I was, okay. And we had few. So, uh -huh. I, 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 so you tried to make sure yeah. you get one. But I mean, it's all that. I was a, as, a, as a kid, this is like four years, three years. I, I remember I was very shy because mm. when, um, you know, you saw what we call the, the speech days when, when the parents came. And uh -huh. we, you had to get up and talk. Yeah, I always get these memories because I, I always used to stand at the back to hide because I didn't want people to see me. <laughs> so <laughs> I look back and I laugh. I'm like, okay, it's, it was, it was that now bad. you're right. <laughs> yeah, now I'm right at the, at the front of the stage. Okay. Yeah, so that was me. I, kindergarten after I went to a school called Namirembe Infants mm. Primary, Primary Schools, school. right above 
uh, above that kindergarten, mm -hmm. uh, after Mengo Senior, mm -hmm. there's a school up there called uh -huh. the Infant School. Okay. So also Namirembe Hill, I went there to like, to like P2. Mm -hmm. So when I was in P2, my dad came back from the USSR. So you said he had gone and done his masters as yeah, well. Yeah, came back with a PhD, got a good job here in him, with the Minister of Health mm -hmm. as a chief pharmacist. He was heading the the, the UPL, the Uganda Pharmaceuticals Limited, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like in Lago and all that. Mm -hmm. So when he came back, he said, "Ah, this guy should go in boarding school. Mm. Yeah, P3 now. <laughs> in P3. Yeah, boarding kicks in." <laughs> Because now also I think my my brother had come in mm -hmm. at that point uh, my brother was born yeah yeah so ah P3 Nkumba how was it tough <laughs> it was tough Nkumba primary yeah what are your memories wow very fond memories also there Nkumba I moved there P3 P4 I think uh, no P3 P4 I think in P4, after I yell something, now my father is transferred mm -hmm. to Mbarara. Okay. Ah, so we have to move to Mbarara now from Kampala. So you moved? Yeah, we moved with the family, my dad, my mom, we moved. Okay. So he was the head of UPL in Mbarara, we moved there. I mean, life was good. You know? But now you're in day school. I mean, life was good. You know? But now you're in day school. Now I'm, I'm in day school. Okay. Now I joined the school called Boma. Uh -huh. Ah. You're there for a few years? That's like think for one year. Eh? Just for a year. And then you moved again? You know, yeah, you know when your parents work for government, in those days they used to transfer people like, it's like being in the police, they used mm. to transfer people every now and again. You, you're always on the move because, yeah, I don't know why, but one year, two years you move. Mm -hmm. It was like that. So moved to Mbarara, I went to that school called Boman. I was like, I was like a president there. You know, coming from Kampala, <laughs> you're wearing shoes. <laughs> shoes was news for people. <laughs> they drop you in a, in a nice sky every morning, you know. Mm -hmm. They pick you for lunch to go back home, because I used to have lunch at home. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, that's what it was. You know, that is that's, yeah, that's what it was. So pick you up for lunch and then bring you yeah, back. Yeah, bring me back. At one o'clock on the dot, the guys at the gate. It was only... Probably in the hospital, only like four kids who went home for lunch. Okay. I remember there was one Indian mm -hmm. who I remember. It's called Jivraj. Even he's now in Kampala. He's a very rich guy now. But mm -hmm. he's picking me in the bands and look at the <laughs> rush home, eat. They bring us back. Uh -huh. That was life. Mm -hmm. After I, I came back to. You to came Mpumba. back to Kampala. Yeah, because then there were issues anyway. My dad stayed there. Mm. But my my dad and mom split uh -huh. then mm -hmm. at that time. That, mm -hmm. that their own issues. Then I came back. Ah, then went back to Mkumba Primary. Did my UPL, UPE. 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 No. It is. PLE. PLE. That's different. It's PLE. Yeah, PLE. Yeah, I did that PLE. Mm -hmm. I passed very well. Yeah, vacation, the same things. Mm. Waiting. Did you enjoy school? You said you passed very well. Was it something that came natural to I, you? I got seven mm -hmm. aggregates in P7. Mm -hmm. So I, I was a brilliant guy, really. Mm -hmm. Seven was good. My mother wanted me to go to Budo. That's why I put my first choice. Okay. And even she did a lot of benching then for me, but then they didn't give me. Mm -hmm. Then I ended up at Macquarie College School. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, in my S1, where, mm -hmm. I, where I did all my high school for six years, mm -hmm. I was at Macquarie College School. Mm -hmm. So that's when, that's when also my love for music and the arts got so much stamped into my, into my yes. soul. They had a really strong music yes. program. Mm -hmm. yeah. Music class was big. MAPA was something everybody wanted to be involved in. Yeah. Like, what's something called MAPA? And at MAPA, even the proudest of the proud would be involved, like, would sit yeah, there You want to it. be on stage. Yeah, you want to be yeah. on stage, you want to do something, you want to be in a play. You want that was nice, and it was the time for us to really prepare for our artistic future. Mm -hmm. So I did that 
S1, S2, S3, S4, I did. You so took on music I took and on music as a subject, it. yes. Mm -hmm. I did it at S4. So Is went this back. when you started learning all the instruments? Yes, when I was at Macquarie, that's when I learned a lot of folk music because we had very good teachers there. There was a, a gentleman called um, Mr. Busurwa. Very knowledgeable Brilliant. in that field. You, you know him? Yes, I you, went to Macquarie. Oh, college. you were there? Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, now I'm with my OG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Mr. Kaizi was there, mm. I remember. And there was a whole, there was a whole bunch of uh, very inspiring young guys who were very talented. Because as I said, me when I went to high school, I was a very tiny guy. I'm still tiny actually, but <laughs> and I was young. Mm -hmm. I think I joined uh, high school when I was like twelve. Oh. Yeah, that's when I was like twelve. And I was I was still very young and very shy. But the guys there who really made me love like I, I want to do this and. Most of my friends are now very prominent musicians as well, like the guys I met in school then. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I see like uh, the, the Kafumbes, the, the Kinobes, the Michael Umas, mm -hmm. the Michael Rose, I think was there, was a bit uh, above us and mm -hmm. uh, there was a whole group anyway. So we did our thing, mm -hmm. a level, I did my head, mm -hmm. head music. At that point, what did you think you were going to do? I wanted to be a musician. I, I was real sure, you were sure. I, I wanted to study music here yeah, even when I even when I filled my uh, my job forms my first choice of of a course was mm -hmm. a, a bachelor of arts degree in musicology because it was a new course in Uganda then okay so my year was probably the second or third intake before because prior to that um, the university only had di a diploma in music, dance, and drama, which, mm, had, which had been there MDD. for many years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here there was a new course called the, the BMAS, which was a Bachelor's of Musicology. So I opted for that because mm -hmm. everybody was putting law. I, know, I, I knew I, I couldn't make a good lawyer because I Can couldn't you talk imagine. To you, your parents about that? Yeah, I told my mom. Your mom, were you on speaking terms with your dad? Would you see him? No, but uh, I was not. Uh, because now. Mm. But when I joined S1, my dad died. Oh. Yeah, so that was a different story. So, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also, had my dad been alive till today, I wouldn't be in working as a musician. Because, you know, you know parents who are doctors, they really force you to go into that line. Mm. You, know? you think he would have tried to make all the all, all the avenues for me to do a PCB, PCM something, to, to do the same thing like him. <laughs> yeah, but... Mm. Life has its own yeah. traits and how things end up. And your mom understood. Yeah, she my mom was your passion. Yeah, she was very open-minded because she really supported my my grooming as an artist. You know, we have something called the Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music. You know, it was a special music uh, curriculum that came from the UK, oh. and the Kampala Music School used to provide that in Uganda, like. I used to play the trumpet as well. Okay. How so, many instruments do you play? Quite a bunch. Actually, I used to play the trumpet so well, uh, but I stopped playing the trumpet. But in school, I was a good trumpet player. I used to play in the school orchestra at Macario College. Mm -hmm. I was the lead trumpet guy there. Uh -huh. So I also did the trumpet for my uh, UCE, USCE. The the practical called the, yeah, the, the pra practical Western practicals. I yes. did that. Okay. But then also the Kampala Music School offered exams from the Associated Board of Royal Music. That, that is the certified examination by the Queen mm -hmm. of England. So when you do that exam, you are you are graded on the same level like the kids in the UK, yes. the, the, the level of music they study. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, so my mother really used to put in some money for me to, to do that. So I think I did like up to grade five. Okay. It's like middle, because the highest grade is grade eight. So she was very supportive of me to, to do that, really. Okay. So I thought I want to do music. I said, no, it's okay. You, you do what you want. Mm -hmm. And all, throughout all my school life, I was an active musician playing in bands in Kampala. But it's, it's amazing that you had that focus from that point. It's not focus. It's just, was it just understanding that that was your calling? It was not even focus. It was just circumstances. That's what I had to do. Because my mother was not really rich. Mm. I came from a middle class family. You know, yeah. But sometimes you need to do things left and right to to get some money because 
back then i used i used to work as a session artist with with, with, with some bands like mm. there was a band called the big five and there was percussion discussion so i used to chip in and work with them oh okay. Le- leave school at five in uniform go to cement to play till midnight all right everybody in cement knows me and when they see me now they those who used to work they remember me as a, a young boy who used to play in uniform <laughs> Yeah. Then go home and do homework. Then go to school in the morning. So that was my kind of life. Okay. You know? Were you being paid? Yes, I was okay. working for money. Good, good. good, good yeah. Hmm. Yes. So <laughs> it's funny. you hmm, It's funny how you were taking all these steps, mm. not knowingly. Not knowingly. Yeah. But they have led you to where you are now. Yeah. We've, we've done. I played at weddings. I, if I'm to count weddings, I played that there <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> I used to be in a brass band. Uh-huh. You know those young brass bands you see at at function guys playing. Mm-hmm. I was I was in that mm-hmm. all my school life. Mm-hmm. I used to play in a brass band. Okay. But at the same time you were still keeping up with the folk uh, instruments yeah, as well. Yes, I was I was doing that as well. Okay.